Today we're going to be installing a set of Mountain lowering springs on a Fiesta ST. Here I have the front lowering spring. It's roughly uh, lowers the car by about one inch. Uh, there's a slight increase in spring rate, roughly around 5%. These will work just fine with the factory uh, front struts and help get rid of some of that 4x4 look that the uh, car has from the factory. Also included with the lowering spring kit is a pair of rear springs. These will go on the rear twist beam. These will lower the rear end about three quarters of an inch. Also have a slight increase in um, spring rate as well and work fine with the, um, the factory rear shocks. These are a very well matched set of springs to the factory dampers. These have been engineered by Mountune. They are of course in the Mountune colors of yellow and black. So before anything else, why don't we just go ahead and uh, let's get started putting these on this car and get this thing lowered down to the ground. Okay, with the car off on jack stands and the wheels off, it's time to start taking the front struts off. Now, to remove the front struts, you have to disconnect the ABS wire here, which is, uh, it's just pulled out. There's a zip tie here, which you'll have to uh, clip and remove, because I haven't found a better way around that yet. You'll also need to remove the end link, which is a, um, a hex key, a hex socket, and then a uh, um, kind of a, a hex bolt, on, or a hex nut on top of that. So that's easy to remove. You have to disconnect the brake line from the strut, which is held with one small screw. And at that point, you're ready to remove the two bolts holding the strut to the steering knuckle and move up top. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, first let's remove the uh, brake, uh, brake hose from the strut. Now one trick that I always do is I always take the bolt, if I can, and actually um, put that back into the opening there. Just got a little corrosion there on the brake line. It's going to stick here. Okay, there we go. All right, now I'll put the bolt back in the strut so we don't lose it. Okay, so the brake line is clear. The EVS wire is clear. Next up is the end link. Which I actually loosen up first with an impact and then I'll go in better with a, uh, with a ratchet. Now I have an air ratchet, but it makes so much noise, you won't be able to hear anything on the video. So I decided to do it the old way, by hand. It's a nylock nut, so at the very end, it's, you can feel where the nylock is uh, still gripping onto that, all the way down the thread. Oddly, taking the end link off is probably one of the hardest parts of the full job. There we go. You don't want to lose that guy. So remove the end link out of the way. Watch out for the BS wire. Once again, I'll put the nut on the end of that. Okay, so those are all, all those pieces are clear. And over here. Yep, it's going to take a 15 millimeter wrench on one side and 18 millimeter uh, socket on the impact. Is that easy? Grab a hold of that. Now 
Now, make note that during the installation process, the nut and bolt, the bolt needs to face to the forward direction. So you'll be attaching the nut on the front side and you always tighten by the nut. So move to the other side here. ABS wire always wants to get in the way here. Now in this one, I'm actually going to leave the bolt attached for a little while. So I'm going to go up top and remove the three bolts up there. And I don't want everything just kind of falling apart. So I just leave a bolt in here. But as you can see, everything is, uh, everything is loose at this point. So let's grab some tools and head up top. All right, we moved up top now. Now in order to get to the upper strut mounts, we need to remove the um, uh, master cylinder here. And I have to tell you, this is definitely not one of the most fun uh, projects you'll have. So let's see what we can do to get this thing off. I got a 10 millimeter uh, wrench and I got one nut up here and I got one nut in the back and the one in the back that's going to be the hardest one. It is buried underneath here. Let's see what we can do to get that off. This is not an operation that is easy if you have big hands so luckily for me it's going to be not too bad. ready yet. Now this is only on the driver's side so the passenger side will be a heck of a lot easier. And I thought last time I did this that this design was a little different. I thought there was a bracket that came off the strut mount instead of being a separate entry, but I could be wrong. It's been a couple of years. Little routine ten turns at a time. I'm not looking forward to putting this part back on either. Now losing one of these nuts would be a very bad thing. So when you do finally get it loose, make sure you don't accidentally drop it down the uh, drop it down the chassis. And. There's a little guy right there. Both of these are removed. And we can pull this out of the way a little bit at least. Try to get some room to work. Now for the next part, I like to use a uh, 13 millimeter uh, ratcheting box wrench. This seems to be one of the best things you can get for this job. So here we go. Let's take the other side apart. Get the rest of this out of here. Now, much like the uh, front strut bolt at the bottom there on the knuckle, I will leave one nut just on enough so that the strut assembly doesn't fall away and I can just remove it by hand. And that's what I've done here. I left the front one just on enough so that I can get it out by hand. Your feet are underneath the strut, so you don't want anything falling out underneath you. But overall, this isn't too bad with the right tool. In fact, as Struts and springs and all that goes. This is definitely one of the easier cars to work on. It also helps to do it when it's new, especially if you live in a climate where you get a lot of snow. Do this after a couple of years, and this project will not be as easy. All right. Once again, you got to make sure you don't accidentally drop one of these nuts behind the uh, strut tower here, down inside the chassis. This one's a little bit harder, of course, with this master cylinder in the way here, so you have to kind of peek underneath here in order to see it. All right, I think we can try to go in by hand now. Well, here's the uh, strut 
half, we'll leave that there. Yeah, I think I think on my 2011, the uh, master cylinder was actually on a bracket rather than being attached like it is here. Okay, so we put put that away. Looks like the one in the back is still uh, looks like it might still be sticky a little bit. Yep, it definitely is. So all right, let's try uh, let's try to get that out some more. You gotta take your time. This is not it's not a very hard project, but you do need to be careful about what you're doing. Make sure you don't drop anything. Here we go. Okay. Take that out. There we go. And now the last one here. For this I like to hold the strut a little bit by hand underneath. That way at least can get this out and doesn't drop away. I'm secure. Okay. And that sound was the strut falling through the uh, bottom. And now let's remove the uh, strut bolt here. All right, so the top is loose. Come back down here, take my light out of the way because that is stuck on the strut. A little pressure on the top here. Here we go. Get that out of the way. Make sure you uh, don't catch the EBS wire as you pull it out. Get a little paint and a fender. And there you go. Struts removed. Time to move to the back. Now, the rears are actually very simple on the Fiesta. All you have to do is re remove the rear lower shock um, bolt and the, uh, the spring basically just falls out. Now, I do have a jack underneath here because when you release the shock, this is acting as a down strap. Nothing will be stopping the suspension from coming down. So I'm going to use the jack to kind of ease the suspension down. By lowering it, the, um, the spring should pop right out. Now I have noticed that the, uh, the brake line here doesn't have a lot of play to it. So I'm actually going to remove the, um, the clamp here. That way this will allow more room for the brake line um, as we lower the suspension down. Shock is now loose. The only thing really holding the suspension up right now is the jack. Let's go ahead and lower that down. Okay, and to check to make sure they're not pulling tight on the brake lines. Nope, they are clear. Check the other side. Okay. ready to come out. Okay, we'll kind of stop there, see if we can get the springs out. Okay, the passenger side spring is now removed. We're going to come over to the driver's side spring and try to pull that out as well. So typically these come out fairly easy as long as you don't get the spring stuck on the shock mount and take it down to the passenger side. Okay, make 
sure this down as far as it would go. Looks like it had some more travel there. All right. So that is how the spring is supposed to come out, unless it gets stuck. Don't forget the spring cap. We'll need that. We got the upper spring uh, isolator. So now we're ready to put the springs back in. All right. Here is the factory spring we just took out. And here is the bone tooth spring that we're going to be putting in. Now, from what I remember from the instructions, the, the tightly packed coils go on the top and the other coils go on the bottom. So it sits in there kind of like this. As you can see, there's a little bit of a difference there between the springs. Now, we may need a spring compressor to install this, but first we're going to try it without. When I did the Ford Racing Springs a couple years ago, we did not need a spring compressor uh, to do the rears. These are a little different design. We may need to. So we're going to give it a shot. Spring cap that installed. Well, somehow, with enough finagling in there, you can install the uh, springs without a spring compressor, but it may actually be easier for you to go ahead and get one. So, I'm going to go button up the, uh, the passenger side and then come back for the, uh, the reinstallation. Well, once you learn the trick how to do the, uh, the rears without a spring compressor, uh, the passenger side took about, uh, about two minutes to install versus the lengthy time it took me to figure out how to get this one. But, no problem. The point is, springs are in, they're seated properly, the upper strut mount is, or the upper spring mount and the lower spring cap, the plastic cap, are all in place and facing the right direction. The spring is now secured where it needs to be. So now we're actually going to raise the suspension back up, put in the shock bolt, but we will not torque it down until we are actually um, closer to ride height. So I'll actually raise the suspension up for the final torque. But for right now, I'll be able to get the, um, get the components assembled. And I'm going to get some new fresh Loctite, put on the uh, bolt, so hold on one second. All right, I got my trusty Ford thread locker here. We'll use a little of that. That's the blue lock, okay? So first, we're going to raise up the suspension. Alright, this is a little bit of a trial and error to get the right height so the shot will drop right in. And it's not quite ready yet. on these threads. Okay. I used to use anti-seize, but the more I work with anti-seize, you know, this is what appears to be a geomet nut, the less and less I like those two combinations together. So we're just going to stick with the standard forward coating and then adding some anti-seize to it. For the sake of assembly time, I'm actually going to use the impact release draw in close, but I'm not going to add the final torque yet. Okay, that'll work for right now, and then I'll come back and torque it afterwards. Alright, so now we will raise the suspension up. Check to see how close we are to ride height. And 
and with that, so I didn't measure it beforehand, just judging where the wheel is inside the parallel, I would say that it's fairly close, and I would lock the bolt down. Like I said, the hardest part about this is just getting sometimes to this stuff. Right away. Okay? Now, time to wrap up the passenger side, and the front, the, uh, the rears are done. Now, for the fronts, what we'll do is we're actually going to send these out to a shop and have the, um, the springs swapped out, and then we'll come back a little bit later and we will install the front struts. It's actually a pretty easy process, it's just to reverse the how we took them out. So, I'll finish up the other side, head to the garage to uh, swap the uh, fronts out, and be back. Alright, so we're back from the shop getting the, um, the struts and springs installed. And what I usually do here, instead of just renting a spring compressor and doing it myself, I take it to either to the, uh, like a local dealership, or um, in this case, just like a, a local muffler shop that could do shocks and struts. And, um, you know, for, a, for not that much money, they will install um, the springs right on the struts so you don't have to worry about it. So now that these are back from the shop, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get these installed in the car. Um, now, one thing that I noticed I said earlier, which was a mistake, was regarding the, um, the master cylinder reservoir. I had thought that that was on a separate bracket on my previous Fiesta that is incorrect. It's actually the same setup. I guess I just didn't remember struggling with it as much as I did on this one. So anyway, we'll have to uh, reassemble that the same way we took it off. This, of course, goes on exactly the same way that we took it off. We're going to slide it up inside the, um, the fender well here. We're going to add a couple of the nuts up on top to help hold it in position. And then we will begin to tighten this thing up and put the car back together. So, uh, another thing you can do is while you, uh, you have the, um, the springs taken out to, or the strut assembly taken out to get the uh, springs mounted, this is a great opportunity to get back in here and really kind of clean in detail. Um, I clean this all up and then uh, put a fresh coat of clear coat and then some uh, rubberized coating on the uh, control arms to help protect them. So, a little house cleaning you can do while the, um, while the car is apart. So, all right, well, let's get started putting this thing back together. If you notice here, it's labeled uh, left or right. As you can see, this is indeed uh, the left side strut. So we're going to go ahead and get this installed. Careful not to uh, nick the paint during the installation here. So you're going to be careful doing that. wire. Okay, now it's just kind of set in there for right now. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and put one of the, uh, the bolts on here. Actually, maybe I just put both of them on just to kind of hold, hold this in position. All I'm doing here is just basically just help position the uh, the strut into the right location. So, and it looks like I'll need to get up the jack to kind of lift this up. This may be a spot where it's better to have two people, but we're going to do it as one. Now I am going to lift by the brake rotor, but there's really nothing on no real weight on here besides just this suspension piece here, so I'm not really too concerned about using the brake order for this particular thing. Now if I was collapsing the spring and putting any significant load through here, um, I would do something a little different. Okay, just made contact, so let's take a look see where the bolts are. Alright, so the, uh, the bolt, the uh, the bolts are now through and remove the lower one to give you a little bit extra room there to work around. So, okay, so these are it's just kind of temporarily put in place here, and we can go ahead and actually reinstall the uh, brake line over here. 
what I'll do is I'll just kind of put the bolt in there for right now, and then I will come back through um, and torque everything down here in a little bit. So we'll just go ahead and get things started going back together. Slide the end length through. Make sure we are clear of that. It's an ABS wire again, so it always seems to be wanting to, uh, to get in the way. fasteners laying around that are easy to step on or trip on, so. Okay, so that's just started right now, so none of these fasteners that are on here, down here are tight, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to move up to the top and get that situated, and we'll come back down here. So top is just going to be a reversal of exactly how we, uh, we took it apart. First one started. Get this one started. Try to always get things started by hand rather than using uh, using any tools. That way, I make sure I don't accidentally cross thread anything. You're not going to really have enough strength to cross thread them by hand. So I ended up zip tying the uh, master cylinder on the way here. I'm not sure if that really uh, helped anything out or not. Okay, got the jack removed. These, this now dropped down, so I want to be able to get this furthest back bolt a little bit easier. Now some guys take the cowling off, I do not, I end up leaving it on. I'm not sure which way is really faster. I got smaller hands, so for me to get back in here and get uh, fastener started isn't too, too big of a deal. Alright, right, so now we're going to grab the uh, ratcheting wrench and tighten those up. Snug for right now, and then I'll kind of come back and do a final tightening, tightening afterwards. Okay. Here's the uh, upper strut cap for the uh, model. Well, stick that in while we can get to it. Simply just presses on. And actually, we'll do that last because I realize now that it will get in the way of the for the spec bolt. So we'll get to that later. Not a lot of room to work back here, but it can be done. Down. 
Now, there actually is a torque setting for these. However, I don't have a torque wrench to get to them. So, we're just going to make them tight. And then we'll probably give them a check after probably about 100 miles of use and see if they've loosened up and off. All right, so since I did zip tie this, I better cut that thing off. Kind of a waste of a good zip tie. I don't know if that helped or not. Okay, put that down. Now we're going to grab the two small flange nuts here and reassemble the master cylinder. Okay, and that just that pops on really easy. The hard part, of course, is getting these fasteners installed without dropping them. First one, not too bad. The hard one is the one that is in the far back corner here. This one is not going to be fun. Okay, I'm just using my fingers here to uh, try to make sure I got the thing started and about as far down as I can get it. So I won't have a lot of room to turn the wrench in there. Okay, put the cap back in here. If I can. Yep. Okay, the cap is installed. Grab our 10 millimeter wrench. And this is just a little turn at a time to get this thing tight. Thankfully, this doesn't have to be too tight. Okay, that should do that. We have our 10 millimeter ratcheting. Now there is a little crust sleeve inside the uh, plastic that prevents you from uh, crushing the plastic. And uh, see, it doesn't have to be too terribly tight, but also don't worry about um, breaking the plastic off. Okay. Let's secure. Do the backside one more check just to make sure. Yeah, and I guess I could use a little bit more turn, so that's why we always try to double check things. There we go. Okay, so everything is up is set up here. Let's uh, go back down and work on the the bottom half and wrap this thing up. Okay, we got the uh, the bolts are already pushed through. They are now. We are going to put a little Loctite on there. So you can see the bolts are uh, facing forward. We're going to put a little Loctite. This, of course, is the blue Loctite we're going to put on there. And this, of course, is a, uh, a thread sealant. It cures with the absence of oxygen. So after everything is tightened, that's when it will begin to uh, cure. Now to start with, we're only going to make these snug, and then we're going to check the shop manual to get the proper tightening spec. Okay, this is where you can gain a little bit of negative camber is by kind of tilting the steering knuckle and spindle back in relation to the strut. So um, how much play there is in all the slot, that kind of determines how much more negative camber you're going to get. Not very much is uh, the truth, but hey, every little bit helps, right?
kind of double check, make sure everything is lining up where it needs to be. Yeah, there's actually very little play um, in this right now, so not going to gain a lot of negative camber out of this, unfortunately. Okay, we'll also uh, tighten up the uh, brake line while we're here. Good and snug. All right, let's grab the shot manual. Or in this case, just a print off of the shot manual. Let's head on over to front suspension. And uh, just for reference, if anyone's following along, you can get a torque wrench up to the top. It's 22 foot pounds for the, uh, the three nuts that hold the strut to the uh, strut tower. Uh, it is uh, 19 foot pounds uh, for that one there that holds the uh, brake line to the strut, and it's 41 foot-pounds for the uh, end link, which we haven't got quite got to yet. So we're looking for uh, 59 foot-pounds, and then we have to go an additional 90 degrees um, after the 59 foot-pounds is achieved. So let's grab our torque wrench. All right, 59 foot-pounds is set. Over the socket. Now, whenever you're applying torque to a fastener, make sure you always apply it to the nut side and hold the bolt side. Okay? Like I said, I really didn't get these too tight when I was uh, just using the simple hand tools here. Kind of want to let the uh, torque wrench set the final torque on this. Okay, so there is 59. Uh, foot pounds of torque. I'm going to do the bottom one and then I will rotate these 90 degrees per the shot manual. And this will achieve the proper clamp load to hold this joint together. Okay. All right, as you can see, both times it actually worked out well. This is almost perfectly flat. And I think I can clear the brake caliper, but if not, I'm actually going to rotate this up to be safe. That also gives me more leverage. I don't know if I can get to uh, 90 degrees with, uh, with what I have here. I may need to switch over to a longer pry bar, but we'll see. Okay, guess it's back to the gym for me. That was a little bit of a struggle. So not quite 90, but uh, we'll, we'll be reinspecting these um, after really the first time they've been heat cycled and you get some load put through here, I'll end up retorquing all these anyway. All right, so that is done. We have thread lock in there, we have the brake secured, we have the EBS wire now reattached, it just slides on in. Um, we have to re-zip tie uh, the little mount here on the side to the uh, EBS wire. Um, I learned a little trick, unfortunately a little too late. Um, there's a little slot on the side of the strut, stick a screwdriver through there, that just pops right out. So uh, if I ever do another one of these, which I will be probably doing another one this weekend, I am going to use that trick because then... I save this mount. So I'll get a zip tie for this. I'll get my Allen key out, tighten that up, move over to the other side and be done. All right, one final step before we uh, complete the suspension here, uh, as we kind of go through and double check, make sure everything is tight. Uh, we need to go back through and double check the rear um, lower shaft mount is tight. And that gets to up to uh, 85 foot pounds. But to do that, 
we need to have make sure the uh, the car is roughly at ride height. So we're going to jack up the rear suspension to about ride height, and then we're going to apply the proper torque. Torque wrench is sent to 85. Okay. Okay. Here we go. All right. We are all torqued. Now it's time to get the wheels back on. All right, well, the car's back out on the ground. The springs are installed. Everything's been torqued. There's only one thing left to do, and that is to go get an alignment. So we're going to head on down to the alignment shop, get that taken care of, and then we'll take some final measurements and then uh, look for the before and after pictures at the end. Now the suspension will settle. So the way it looks right now is not necessarily the way it's going to sit after it's been driven. So we're going to go drive it around, take it to the alignment shop, and come back with the results.